you can use the built-in abs function to get the absolute value of a number. It works for both integers and floating point numbers, and even for complex numbers. For complex numbers, it returns the magnitude. You can use the built-in round function to round a number to a specified number of decimal places. If no number of decimal places is specified, it runs to the nearest integer. You can also use mathfloor and mathseal functions to round down or up to the nearest integer respectively. You can use format function or f-strings to add a thousand separator to a number. This can make large numbers easier to read. str starts with and str ends with methods to check if a string starts or ends with a specific substring. These methods return a boolean value. You can also specify optional start and end indices to limit the search to a substring of the original string. Python has a built-in module called heapq that provides an efficient way to find the n largest or n smallest elements in a collection. The heapq n largest and heapq n smallest functions can be used for this purpose. In this case, the first three largest elements are 24, 9 and 8 and first three smallest element is 0, 1 and 3. And of course, they are sorted in the respective order. An anagram is a word or phrase formed by rearranging the letters of a different word or phrase, typically using the original letters exactly once. For example, listen and silent are anagrams of each other. You can check if two strings are anagrams by sorting the characters in both strings and comparing them. If the sorted strings are equal, then the original strings are anagrams of each other. You can use the built-in keyword module to get a list of all reserved words in Python. The keyword kw list attribute contains a list of all the keywords that are reserved in Python. You can use the built-in dir function to get a list of all the properties and methods of an object. This can be useful for exploring the capabilities of an object or for debugging purposes. You can use the built-in web browser module to open a website in the default web browser. The web browser open function takes a URL as an argument and opens it in the browser. It returns true if the website was opened successfully and false otherwise. You can also use the web browser open new tab function to open a website in a new tab and the web browser open new function to open a website in a new window. Although the behavior may vary depending on the browser and its settings, and there is absolutely no guarantee that a new tab or window will be opened. Let's say you have a string and you want to find the character that appears most frequently. With Python, you can just use the max function along with the str count method to achieve this. Here is how. Apparently, the most frequent letter is L. Do you want to know? how much memory this data structure or any other takes, Python sys module has a useful getSizeOf function to check the memory size of an object in bytes. This can be useful for optimizing memory usage in your programs. Note that the size may vary depending on the Python implementation and the system architecture. This is interesting and allows you to compare the memory size of different data structures or objects in your code. For example, you can compare the memory size of a list and a tuple. As you can see, tuples are generally have a smaller memory footprint compared to lists, which can be beneficial in scenarios where memory efficiency is crucial. This is a simple one. There are three ways to list dictionary keys. You can use list comprehensions, like so. You can use the set function, or you can use the sorted function. Sometimes you need to check if an object is iterable before performing operations that require iteration. The easiest way to do that is calling the built-in iter function and catching the type error exception if it is not iterable. Here is an example. The list is iterable, a string is iterable, number isn't iterable, and the dictionary is also iterable. Let's say you have a list of tuples and you want to sort them based on the second element of each tuple. You can use sorted function along with lambda function as the key to sort the list based on the second element of each tuple. However, a more efficient way to achieve the same result is using the item getter function from the operator module. 
This approach is generally faster because it avoids the overhead of creating a lambda function for each element in the list. Both methods will give you the same result. Sorting in reverse is easy with the built-in sorted function. You just need to set the reverse parameter to true. You can also achieve the same by passing a custom key function that negates the values. Here is how you can do it. And here is the result. Let's say we have a list of days a week and we want to create a list of tuples where each tuple contains the index and the corresponding day of the week. We can use the built-in enumerate function to achieve this easily. Here is how. If you want the index to start from a different number, you can pass second arguments to the enumerate function. For example, to start the index from 1 to the following. You can print colored text in a terminal by using the ANSI escape codes. These codes are special sequences of characters that the terminal interprets as commands to change the text color, background color, or other text attributes. Here is an example of how to print colored text using ANSI escape codes. Note that the ANSI escape codes may not work in all terminals or environments, so be sure to test your code in the target environment to ensure compatibility. If you want to find the index of an element in a list, you can use the built-in enumerate function along with a for loop. Here is an example. We found the index of cherry, which is 2. You can check if a string is empty by using a simple if statement. An empty string evaluates to false in a Boolean context, so you can use the following code. For the empty string, we have the string is empty, and for hello string, we have the string is not empty. You can use the OS module to check if a file exists on disk. The path exists function returns true if the specified path exists and false otherwise. Here is an example. Of course, example.txt does not exist on my file system. 